Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. This time I'm going to be showing you how to sharpen a chainsaw. Here I have a Partner 351 chainsaw I've been looking at recently. In my previous video I had this all stripped apart, I did a bit of troubleshooting on it to get it going again. If you're interested in that I'll put a link to that video at the top of the screen now. But this time I'm purely going to be focusing on how to sharpen a chainsaw. I've also got this chainsaw sharpening kit here made by Oregon so it'll be a little review on this and uh, we'll see if it's any good. So first of all you want to make sure that your chain is correctly tensioned. So in order to do that we just loosen off this bar clamp and that will allow us to adjust the tension of the chain. So if I loosen this off you can see the chain goes really slack. If I tighten this up that tightens the chain up and we want it so that the drive links don't leave the bar. These are the drive links here and you want those to sit inside the bar. So you want to tighten that up nicely so that the drive links can't jump out. That looks good to me. I'm just clamping my chainsaw into the vise. That's to hold it still so I can sharpen it. Bit of WD-40 to clean up all the links. All I'm doing at the moment is just cleaning up the chain. Right, let's take a look at this chainsaw sharpening kit. It's made by Oregon. It's quite a nice little kit, it comes with a nice carry case. This is around £16 and it's going to save you money in the long run. Um, it saves keep buying new chains when you can just sharpen them up yourself. It comes with three different size files to fit different size chains. So you've got a 4mm file, 4.8mm and a 5.5. You've also got a flat file for taking the top of the rakers off and here we have a depth gauge for doing that. It also has this nice gauge that clamps onto the file and that way it will help you keep your angles when you're sharpening the chain, but I'll show you that now. So let's have a look at the chain. Here we have the tooth. At the front we've got the depth gauge, also known as a raker, and in here this is known as the gullet. So when filing this tooth to make it nice and sharp, I wanna put my file in the gullet and I wanna sharpen this at 30 degree angle. So if we have a look at this guide, we've got a few angles on here. We've got 30 degrees, 25 degrees, or 35 degrees up this end. It doesn't matter which angle you choose as long as you do all the teeth the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the file into the gullet. Here's a tooth here that I'm gonna be sharpening. And I wanna always keep this line parallel with the chain. And the file will only cut when you push. So there's no point dragging it back through or else you'll just make your file blunt. The file is sitting perpendicular to the bar. So it's not like that. It's not like that. It's at 90 degrees to the bar. And you want to keep that as flat as possible when you're cutting the teeth. So what I've found is when you're sharpening each tooth it's important to pull up at the same time just to finish it off and that will give you the nice sharp tooth on the top so as you're doing it push it and pull up right at the end and that just finishes it off razor sharp. Once you're happy the tooth is nice and sharp you just need to take off the top of this depth gauge or raker as it's also known. So using this that comes in the kit you can put this over the top of your tooth and it just leaves a little bit of the raker exposed and then you can just file off carefully the top of that raker. 
If you set this depth gauge too low, then you'll be cutting off too much material and it could potentially stall your saw. If you don't take off enough of this, then you won't be cutting much at all. Depending on where this raker or depth gauge is set will depend on how much material you're chipping off every time the saw is going around. That link's done now, so I'm just gonna paint that. And move on to the next one. One thing about this kit, I think it should have included two handles because I have to keep going between the flat file and the round file. Um, and I can't get the handle off of my round file now because I had to hammer it in, it kept falling off. So yeah, that would be an improvement to that kit. I did buy a slightly cheaper one before that just included the 4mm file and I think that was better to be honest. It was about £10 rather than £16. Um, if you only need the 4mm file that's a better kit because it did come with two handles. Other than that it's alright, it's not too bad. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. Let's go see how she cuts. I just made a test cut and it really was uh, like powder, the sawdust, so I've taken these rakers down a bit more with my file, so hopefully it should chip off a bit more this time. Most of the time people want a chainsaw for cutting up logs and they want to do it nice and quick, efficient, so I've taken the rakers down a bit more. Uh, the teeth are nice and sharp so that should cut much better now. <laughs> pointers make sure you set your rakers to the right level uh, depending on what you're cutting it's always good to do a test cut maybe start by filing them down to this depth and then go and do a test cut and see if you want to remove a bit more because I definitely had to remove a little bit more off of the rakers as um, it was just dust really having removed that amount you remove a little bit more and the chips are a bit bigger and you get a quicker cut when you're filing make sure you do that lift up cut just at the end. I found that made a big difference as well doing in my test cuts and you can definitely feel the difference in how sharp the teeth are. So there we go, that's how I sharpen my chainsaw. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it and thank you so much to everyone that's already supporting the channel. Take care guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.